Welcome all you guitar nerds out there. On my workbench today we have a Stag Dobro style resonator guitar made in China. The customer bought this guitar for very little money because of all kind of rattle and buzzing and a very poor tone. No fun to play at all. Uh, so this points to a very poor setup and I'm going to take care of this and set up the guitar right. We also gonna swap the cone to an US made bird cone and that gives us the opportunity to compare these two cones. As you can see the guitar is pretty much standard mahogany plywood body, sieve sound holes and a fan cover plate. The fretboard looks like ebony but it's some kind of composite material that you can find on cheaper Martin guitars nowadays or other budget brands. So let's take this jewel apart and let's have a look inside and see what we can find inside this guitar. Mm. Well, as you can see, we have a lot of glue squeezed out and the sound well is not glued in the center of the guitar. So my Chinese workmate put in this piece of curling to keep the cone from dropping into the guitar. They also had a good day with their drill, drilled every hole twice and as you can see, they cut out the sound holes in the sound wheel by hand. Uh, might be a very shaky hand because they are very rough. I'm glad that we can hide all these things with a cover plate so nobody will ever see it again. Alright, let's compare the cones. Here we have the China cone. Seems to be hand spun but now we look at the bird cone and it's plain to see it has another shape more like a bowl and now we can start to compare the tone of these two pieces let's start with the china cone And now, the U.S. made bird cone. Yeah, for sure a more bell-like tone. The spider bridge wiggled around on the edge of the cone. Even on the string tension, some of the legs didn't touch the cone at all and this issue can cause a lot of funny noise and it won't give you a good sound either. So I sanded the legs down on a flat surface and I polished the spider. Um, now it's plain and it won't wiggle around anymore. This is the original bridge. As you can see, a bad tear out on the base side. No good at all. Here I'm working on the new bridge. Uh, file it in shape. The same radius as the fretboard has. And I keep it in one piece. Not like the original one in two wimpy pieces of wood. Because my personal opinion is that one piece of wood will transfer the tone better. But that's just my opinion. I cut the wood roughly 
to the size that I need on a bandsaw. And don't worry, I still have my fingers in place. With my trusty little sanding block, I sand down the bridge into the right size that I need. And this sanding block gives me the opportunity to sand it in a right angle and it's very straight. And plain, as you can see when I put it on the sanding block. Okay, here's the final product. Here I address the string spacing, and after that, I can start to cut the slots for the strings. But what about the tension screw in the center of the cone? Well, once you set it up right and tighten it a quarter or a half turn, you actually don't need to touch it anymore. You can leave it as it is so you can use the bridge in one piece like I did. After cutting the string slots and set up the right string height, I start to assemble the guitar, as you can see here. In a few seconds you can listen to the sound test. I left the old strings on the guitar to make sure that we have the same circumstances. And my conclusion is the bird cone sounds warmer, more balanced and slightly louder. But make your own decision if it's worth the 60 bucks that you spend for a US-made cone. And hey, let me know your opinion.